Going Through Life with Betty and Bob. This is Milton Cross, ladies and gentlemen, inviting you to join us for a visit with Betty and Bob Drake. But first, a few words from a friend of yours. Well, the excitement of Betty and Bob's first day back in Walton continues. With the aid of Chet Andrews, the local young school teacher, Betty and Bob prevented a mob from taking violent action against Frank Rusak, a half-crazed farmer down the road who has locked himself in his house with his two daughters and has wounded a deputy sheriff in his insane defiance of a world that he thinks is responsible for the death of his wife. Now back home at the Drake house, where Chet met Claire Evans, they were sitting around eating sandwiches and drinking coffee and thinking of what to do about Rusak in the morning, when suddenly there was a frantic knocking on the door and 11-year-old Anita Rusak came in. She said that her father had fallen asleep and that's why she was able to climb out of the window and run down the road. And when she saw her school teacher's car outside the Drake house, she ran in. After giving little Anita something to eat and milk to drink, Betty got the idea that perhaps they might go back to the Rusak house, go in with little Anita and perhaps make the father of this distressed child listen to reason. Now we find Betty and Bob and Chet and Anita as the car is pulling up on the road a couple of hundred feet away from the Rusak house. Suddenly a voice cries out. Who's there? I say, who's there? Oh, I'm Chet Andrews. Mr. Andrews, what are you doing back here this time of night? And who are these? Oh, it's Mr. and Mrs. Drake. Huh? How are you? Hello. Say, isn't that one of the Rusak kids? Yes, it is. How'd she get out of that house? I've been watching here for... I got out of the back window and ran down the dirt road. What are all of you doing back here? Tom, I've got a favor to ask you. Yeah? Though. Tom, I want you to give us permission to walk over to the house over there and get Rusak to leave peacefully. Or he'll kill you. That man's crazy. Well, we think we might be able to get him to come with us. No, that's too big a chance. He shot Fred Waller. You can't trust a man like but that. But we've got a feeling we can talk sense to him now. And in the morning when the law tries to get him out by force, there's liable to be bloodshed. Yeah, most likely. But if you let us go now, and if we succeed in getting him out, why, you'll get a lot of credit for it. You admit it's better to try to get him out without any blood being shed, don't you? Sure, but... Now, come on, Tom. Don't you see we've got Anita with us? He won't shoot. Well, all right, go ahead. I'll be covering you, though. Fine. And if he takes a shot at you... Please, don't kill my papa. Nobody's going to kill your papa, Anita. All right, let's go. Well, you'd better get across the field. Here's a path across the field. I'll show you the way. I hope Rusak is still asleep. Yeah, so do I. Oh, I'm sure papa's asleep. He hasn't slept for days. Well, that's Topsy, our Guernsey cow. She sounds hungry to me. She's in the box stall and she hasn't been fed for days. Oh, don't you worry about Topsy, dear. She'll get plenty to eat soon enough. Did you have enough to eat over at the house? Oh, sure. Wait until Marie eats these sandwiches I brought along. She's starved. And Papa must be hungry, too. Well, here we are. Still hasn't seen us. 
Well, then he's still asleep. Well, I suppose there's only one thing to do. He's hoping he doesn't grab his gun and start shooting. Mr. Rusak. Mr. Rusak. Go away or I shoot! Mr. Rusak, this is Chet Andrews, your daughter's teacher. Go away or I shoot! Papa, Papa! Anita! Yes, Mr. Rusak, it's Anita and she's out here with us. No, she's in here with Maria! Anita! Anita! Papa, Papa! She got out through the back window. Go away! Mr. Rusak, I want you to listen to me just for a minute. I don't listen! Anita is out here with me, and so are some old friends of yours. Old friends? I got no friends. There's no deputies out here, no police. I don't believe you. I give you my word. You give me word? Doctor, give me word. My wife told you not going to die, but she died. Now you believe Anita's out here, don't you? Yes. And your old friends? Who are my old friends? Betty Drake. Who? And Bob Drake. I don't know them. Oh, yes, you do. We've got the house a mile down the road. Betty Drake. Betty Drake. Bob. That's right. He remembers us. Please, let us in. You have our word, too, that there's nobody else out here. Now, come on, Mr. Rusak, let us in. Please, Papa. <laughs> oh, Papa, Papa. Anita, Anita, why did you run away? Oh, I was afraid, Papa. Anita, you don't have to be afraid anymore, Maria. These people are all friends. Here's some sandwiches. Oh, I'm hungry. Here, eat them. They're wonderful. Oh, I'm so hungry. Hello, Mr. Rusak. Betty Drake. How are you, Frank? Bob. Hello, Mr. Rusak. Well, we better close the door quick before Sheriff... All right. You can put that gun down, Mr. Rusak. Maybe this just trick. Mr. Rusak, you know, you wounded a man today. One of the deputy sheriffs. They tried to get me out of my house. I no let them. I kill him? No, you shot him in the shoulder. He's in no particular danger. That's good. But, Frank, you're guilty of shooting a man. And according to the law... I don't care about law. If law is so good, why my wife die? That's another kind of law, Mr. Rusak. A law we have nothing to do with. And one that we can do nothing about. Oh, no. Tonya don't have to die. Tonya don't have to die and leave me alone on farm. Leave kids without a mother. You mustn't believe that people are your enemies, Mr. Rusak. Sure enemies. Everybody my enemies. Everybody glad when Tonya die. We keep nice farm. We make good living. Everybody jealous. Everybody glad Tonya die. Oh, no, that isn't true, Mr. Rusak. Sure, it's true. Bob and I just came back to Walton today. I don't hear about that. And when we heard that Tonya had passed away... It was a terrible shock. For no, me. no, everybody glad. That's why I keep Anita and Maria out of school so other children don't laugh at them. Remember the time we all had supper together, Mr. Rusak? Supper? Of course you remember. No, I don't remember. I only remember... Yes, there was a thunder shower that afternoon. We just had the roadway to the house dug up. When the shower was over, it was a, a sea of mud. Sure enough, it was some rain. Yes, and then Bob got our car out of the garage because he had to go to town, and the car sank in the mud right up to the axle. Sure. <laughs> ah, and then I come along with Tonya, and I see what happened. Yes, yes, and you went back to your farm for your tractor. You remember that, don't you? Sure, and I come back with Tonya, and I pull you out of the mud. Yes. And then you remember what happened? Sure. You offer me money, and I got mad like anything. That's a fact. I don't think I ever saw a madder man. You don't offer money to a neighbor who do you favor? And then I suggested that we have supper together around the outdoor fireplace. Oh, sure. That was one wonderful supper. Steak. Yeah, that's right. And then you drove up to your farm and brought down some of your corn. And we broiled it in the hut. And spuds. Sure. But we have lots of fun that <laughs> night, huh? Yeah. And you remember how later that night... Yes, I remember. Tonya sings songs from the old country. Yes. Beautiful songs. Yes. Tonya always sings nice. I fall in love with Tonya because she sings so nice. I'm sure of that. And she always sings children to sleep. And they miss that now. In the year and a half that we were away, we spoke of you and Tonya often. Speak of us? Why? Because you are our friend. One always speaks of friends. Huh. That's funny. When you go away, Tonya and I, sure, you forget all about us. But we don't forget about Betty and Bob Drake. Oh, no. Every time somebody come to house for supper and say to Frank and Tonya, this is the most wonderful supper anybody ever had. Tony and I laugh. <laughs> we tell them about supper we have with our friends, the Drake. Oh, I feel much better now. Papa, 
Papa, you want something to eat? Here's a sandwich. Well, that's all right, baby. So you see, Mr. Versace. Anita. Yes, Papa? Maria. Come over here. Well, don't look at me like that. Why are you afraid? We're not afraid. No. I'm afraid your papa make one big mistake. He think all the time he have no friend in this world. He think everybody against him. Oh, papa. I guess I go a little crazy, huh? But I got friends. Of course you have. Lots of them. They feel sorry, Tonya, die. They remember how she sing. They remember. <laughs> Tonya. Oh, Papa, Papa. Tonya. Mr. Rusak. Papa, Papa. Oh, Papa. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. You say I shoot a man? Yes, Frank. It's not right. It's against the law. I think I give myself up to the sheriff. But I don't kill the man. No. That's good. That's good. Well, that was a very moving scene. And it proves a great truth. That friendship and kindness can be more powerful than force. What will the law do to Frank Rusak? Will it be as understanding as Betty and Bob? What will happen to Maria and Anita if their father has to go to jail? Listen in when we next meet Betty and Bob and find out how they help Frank Rusak meet the next crisis in his life and the life of his children. This is Milton Cross again, ladies and gentlemen, inviting you to take a moment to listen to an important message. This program is presented over this station five times each week, Monday through Friday, at this same hour. Join us when we next meet Betty and Bob. Your announcer, Milton Cross.